Well, welcome to Rapid Art. Today we're sitting at the grown up table, <laughs> drinking coffee because Grandma said it was okay. <laughs> Vicki Schumacher. Uh, Vicki's from Sioux Falls. She's a printmaker primarily, and we're hanging out in an undisclosed location somewhere near the Wyoming border. <laughs> so don't even try to find us. <clears throat> it's not going to happen. Anyway, so what got you interested in printmaking? Well, uh, I. I was teaching art lessons, and I, <laughs> I, saw, I saw it in a book, and a printing a fish. So I printed a fish with some children using a carp and some tempera paint, and um, it was a lot of fun. And so it kind of mushroomed from there, and it uh, ended up where I got to know the people in the Nature Printing Society, which is an international organization of nature printers and um, we all print fish and plants and uh, about any rocks and any roadkill. <laughs> you have printed roadkill I understand. Yeah, yeah, yep. I, I have. Yeah, it's a yeah. nice flat frog. Came out pretty okay, good. so um, let's see, you live in Sioux Falls. Uh, you're, you've, uh, you've gone to school at USD. Yeah. You've studied art, I think uh -huh. maybe art Education, education and um, taught for a while. You've been active as a, a teacher in the Sioux Falls area, teaching mm -hmm. both in the schools and at your home, out of your home. And um, I think you were involved teaching uh, some community mm -hmm. drawing classes um, and got involved in print making um, through your uh, through teaching, kind of, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, now, the, and you spend a lot of time, like every summer you spend some time traveling to the Northwest uh, to take part in classes and also to you teach as well, right? Yeah, with the right. Nature Printing Society, we have right. annual workshops, okay. but they're not always in the Northwest, but quite often they are. Sometimes oh. they're... Um, the one that was supposed to be in Maine this year was canceled because of COVID. Um, and uh, yeah, that's, I do teach the part of the, you know, take part in teaching the workshop. Do you feel like uh, COVID's really changed the way you, you work or how you work, who you hang out with? <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, it has. It, it doesn't, um, it seems like, at first it seems like you have a lot of opportunity because you have all this free time and then after a while, I started feeling like a prisoner yeah. in the house and not really feeling like doing anything. Um, so it's it's changed in that respect. And um, I don't know. I think you just have to. I think the Zoom meetings help a little bit and help you know and right. interacting with anybody um, helps. Yeah, that's kind of what how this all started. It was supposed to maybe give artists an opportunity to share ideas on how they're dealing with the pandemic. Yes. But it seems like a lot of artists, um, this is kind of their ideal. And so I don't know if it's helping much. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. It, it, it's When you see somebody else making art, it seems to kind of stimulate you to want to make art yourself. Yeah. And so I, I think that it, it has it has been good, and there have been you can get lessons um, on the internet and do things that way. It's it's just it's hard to keep motivated when you're alone. So. So do you find you're doing more work or less? Overall? Well, I've started doing a little bit more now, um, so I, I I think I'm getting more interested in it again. Um, in other respects too, not just nature printing, but drawing and painting. And I'm, I'm trying to work on um, getting better at watercolors and acrylic painting. So that's what I do. Okay. 
Um, and you, you brought some examples of some of your nature prints. Yes. Show everyone. Cool. I did. Okay. I'm sorry, you moved on from? Printing fish to printing plants, partly okay. because I could only print so many walleye. Yeah. I've used acrylic paints here um, that have been thinned down, and this is a printmaking paper. This is a wild grape, and this was done during the fall, and so I could really experiment with having some, some beautiful colors put into there because the, the fall colors of, are so pretty. I added some grapes to it on my. <clears throat> okay, we're back. Okay, I'm going to do a quick demonstration. Hey, yeah, can you tell us a little bit about the tools? Okay, well, the tools here, these are called brayers, not rollers. Oh, shoot. <laughs> I know. And um, the way to use a brayer is this, and when you set it down, you set it down like this. You don't set it in a big pile. Of, you no, know. you don't set it like that and you set it out of the way like this. So that's about all you need to know about brayers. And then you want to keep the ink evenly distributed on your brayer. This is a palette knife. I'll take a little bit of this ink. This is an oil-based ink. You can actually use water-based ink. You could use um, oil paint. You could use acrylic paint, except it dries fast. So it's just any kind of a printable substance. Do you have paper towels? Do I have paper towels? I think I have. Um, okay. I have a bunch of oily rags. <laughs> no, <clears throat> no, I found them. Like, I brought some. Of course, I brought them. Okay, so now I've got some ink here. I've got some plants. Normally, I use fresh plants. Um, just I think they print a little bit better, but we're in the middle of winter. And so um, these are some, some really pretty dried plants that we'll, we'll give that a try. Mostly the dried plants are going to absorb the ink um, more and more unevenly, I think, than a, the fresh ones. Okay. All right. So I think I will use this bigger brayer. Oh, I kind of like that. Uh, yeah, you can, well, you can do monoprints <laughs> off of off of your palette too. Um, the problem with printing is once you get started, you can't stop. What? Because it's stop addictive. Printing? Yeah, I mean. Or because of the ink drying. Oh. No, 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 it's because it's because um, it's, it's it's a surprise. Each oh. each print is a surprise. It's um, this would be like a mono print. I'm right. still surprised that you agreed to talk to me. <laughs> So am I. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I'll set the plants aside and um, pick out a plant. I'm going to put a piece of paper that I'm going to print on over here. This is a printmaking paper. Um, really, there again, you can use whatever paper you have on hand. It's, okay, what makes it a printmaking paper? Well, exactly. the weight. The weight. You could actually use um, a cardstock that you use for, you know, your yeah. laser printer. Um, although that some have sizing in them, which um, is makes the surface different. This printmaking paper will absorb your ink nicely, and uh, it just feels really good. Okay. It's really nice. I think that I'm gonna. Um, what if all you have is cold pressed water pa watercolor paper? Pressed. Is that the kind of the texture? I think that's the bumpy kind. Yeah. The bumpy kind. <laughs> um, Trying to keep it. You know. <laughs> well, I have used that, but it's, it doesn't make a clean print, but yeah. it makes a good beginning if you want to add water to, okay. to it. Yeah. Okay, and so printmaking paper doesn't really have a right and a wrong side, but one side is a little smoother than the other where you're going to get a little more detail. But okay. if, you, if you grab it and print on what's the wrong side, it really doesn't matter. At least to me it doesn't. I believe these might have been Queen Anne's lace. I'll take one of these and you hold that. Oh, sure. Okay. Okay. You already got ink on my finger. So this is going to make my ink really dirty. Okay. 
Now because this is dry, I'm, I'm really giving it a pretty um, aggressive amount of ink, which I wouldn't, I wouldn't put that much ink or that much pressure, I don't think, on a fresh one. I'm going to put it on the paper where I want it. Okay, whoops. <laughs> Wrong side. So put the ink side down. And then with another piece of paper, usually newsprint or something like this, a throwaway paper, to set it down and you can press on it. This looks like you're the, the human press. You cannot move it or it will blur. Ben, is this the prescribed method? Um, or, a, 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 I mean, there isn't a, a press out there that you would use, a mechanical. Oh, you could use a big press. Oh, okay. Yeah, you could. But, you know, this way with your hand, how it's soft. Yeah. It is so you're actually kind of getting inside. Well, you, you could do that with the blankets on the press yeah. or something, but um, I don't know. Well, it's nice. There's a, I mean, a lot of people I know, I mean, like I'm interested in printmaking, but I don't know if I have room for a press, so it's kind of um, nice to have. Press would be fun, but um, yeah. Options available. Yeah, so I, I wouldn't need one. So anyway, it made a pretty good print. So let's add a different kind. And, you know, sometimes I think that this art, the art form itself is quite simple, but um, what's, what's really important is composition. So, uh, okay, no more ink for this thing. Do you need some Lindsay love? Um, that wouldn't be bad. So we're going to add a little bit of linseed oil. You can add some kind of a thinning agent to this oil-based ink. Um, because it's cool in here and, uh, and the plant is quite dry. So I don't know how fast it's going to come out though. I'll put a little bit up here and now. Okay. And just put a little bit of it on the palette knife. Would you like to hear a trick, a printer's trick? Yeah. Okay. So going along and you're like me and you see how I'm already getting ink all over myself. Mm -hmm. And this will get on the paper also. So when that happens. There it is. Okay. Okay, so I'll take the yarrow and take the ink side. And this is so long that it's a problem. Um, okay, and are we still thinking about composition at this point or are we just kind of. Yeah, because I don't want to, like, I want, you know, the, the fundamentals of composition. Can you think, kind of work with those, like the diagonal? See how I'm developing a diagonal in here? Oh, yeah. And um, also that you don't want any one area to draw the attention away from everything. You want the, the viewer to have a lot to look at and have the eye kind of moving around. So um, I'll just put this here. And yes, you can't ink up more than one plant at a time mm -hmm. and lay it down and do that. And, you know, if you're pretty confident it's going to work, so it's kind of up to you. Does this piece of paper have a name? <laughs> I think it's called craft paper. Okay, I kind of like actually the print on the craft paper. Yes, it's, it's nice. It doesn't look too bad. We've got, look at how nice this one is. You know. yeah. So, yeah, I've saved these and then I've done like a um, sort of a paper mache thing where you can I don't know, play around with them and sort of thing. Okay, so um, let me get another one of the, the Queen Anne's lace. Now I've printed the same Queen Anne's lace but flipped it over right here. You can see that, but I don't, I don't want my viewer to be able to say, hey look, that one is... Oh, you know, right. So you can, you can do that a little bit, but you can't, I wouldn't use it for the whole thing or anything. I think we should... Uh, well, let's see. This is kind of sweet. Okay. Geez, now that you said that, I'm not going to be able to unsee it. <laughs> I know. You're cutting corners. I am cutting corners. But, um, 
Okay, so let's put this uh, like right there. It's kind of not quite in the middle. I don't want to smack in the middle. Remember, I remember in college, teach you that. What's that? Don't, don't, don't put everything smack in the middle. Oh, of the page. yeah. Well. <laughs> but, but you know, it worked for Andy Warhol. <laughs> so anyway, it's yeah. That's one of those yeah. rules that's been broken so many times. That, I know it's, it's it's a good story. But you're right. It's, uh, let's see. So should I use this one again? No, now you've got me all fired. <laughs> so now I'll take well, this I one. A, I have a trained artist's eye. So, oh yeah. You know. Okay. So I want to get, this thing needs a lot of ink, so I'm going to scrape up the ink. It's very dirty. There's some more here. I'll put a little more ink on there. I usually don't like to squeeze the ink directly onto the plate where I'm inking. I'm carrying that down. I like this one because it, it has a nice, um, you know, hmm. I don't know, see which side lays better. Keep in mind that once you lay it down, um, yeah. it kind of might explode on you. I do. So I want to keep it quite a bit. And yeah, this I was going to explain when I add color to these then later on. there and then here at my hand. All right. All right. Well, hey, um, thanks Vicki for stopping by. We're having technical difficulties for one thing, but thanks for, um, for this demo. This is great. And what do we have here? That's a finished? Yeah. So, close? so it, it may look kind of rugged right now, but, um, through, you can see some of this stuff is a kind of a watercolor sort of stroke uh, and method on there in the background. And also, you can stain the paper. That's why this paper has that mottled look to it. Uh, but it'll re resemble this more than anything. So even though it may not look like it much in the beginning, it's, the color adds so much to it. Okay. Well, thanks. Um, if you're interested in Vicky's art, it's you do have um, natureprints.net. Natureprints.net online. So also, the Nature Printing Society has a lot of you know good resources. Okay, and I'll put those links in the in the description video description. Um, okay, well hey, happy new year. This is the New Year's edition happy new year. of Rapid Art. Cheers.